This is uh, the show I've actually been waiting to be doing for three years here. We have an entirely new set here for Rider Real Time and a guest I've really been looking forward to having on the show. Uh, we have someone who I would definitely consider the most popular person, if not or one of the most popular people here at Rider, particularly amongst the students. Dean Irameo is finally a guest here in Real Time. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Nick. It's been a long week. It's the first week of class concluding. Hectic, uh, all sorts of things going on. Yeah. People calling, parents calling, students mm -hmm. getting adjusted, but it's fun. Yeah. Most of the days go quickly. Yeah, it's, it, I've already uh, talked to a lot of students. Some adjustments going well, some, you know, could use some uh, tweaking. Um, and we're at our first weekend of programming, a lot of programming coming up. So when I was sleeping last night, I literally, I literally woke up and said, I've, oh, I know what the question I want to ask you, the first question I want to start off with, because it's okay. something I struggle with that I know you probably have it worse than me. You see so many students during the course of the summer, and they get back here. How do you remember their names? And also, how do you remember each of them individually with their interests? You know, um, that's a good question. If I give you this trade secret, yeah. we, we may not be able to show this on television yes. because it'll give it away. I don't remember everybody's names. Yeah. And <clears throat> unfortunately, as the years go on, I remember less and less. But I try to remember something about them. Usually, I, I won't remember a name, but I'll yeah. remember something about them. Like a high school they went to interest. Or if not, I'll, I will make them believe I do. I know. It's so bad. Someone finally called me out on it. My big thing is to always say, buddy or darling. And I don't know, I don't know where, first of all, I don't know, those are two very old-time-ish things to yes. call people. But um, You know, uh, there, there will come a point in the conversation where I'll, I will say to them, You'll have to excuse me. I'm old. I sure. don't remember your name. Just remind me one time. I'll never forget again. Yeah. Until the next. Until time. the next time when you absolutely forget. No, I I, I hear you. That was uh. It's just I hope constantly people come up. Do you remember me from summer orientation? And it's like, well, I can only imagine because I only see a fraction. I remember of them. faces. Do you? Um, some of the parents, for example, at move in. Yeah. Um, don't remember their names, but they say I'm the guy that kept making that announcement. Yes, yes. I do remember yes. that. Well, I do remember vividly my, during my uh, orientation when I was coming onto campus. I initially was a resident when I was a student here. This was 2003. I didn't remember anybody else, but I remembered Dean Mayo. I absolutely remember that. But it's funny, I say this, so I was talking to Cindy Three today at lunch. And I said, to, and, uh, I said that you were coming on the guest. And she said, God, that's so funny. She was just at Princeton University the other day and was talking with someone who I guess knew uh, uh, to someone else and who knew that she worked at Ryder and said, does Dean Mayo still work there? So do you get a lot of that, like years uh, down the line? I do, and this is, this is the scary part. Um, at orientation now, yeah. parents are coming up and telling me, you were my dean when I was here. Really? My son is coming here now, and I always appreciate being made to feel very old. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's true. I've been here a long time. I've been here. I've, I've just, um, as of September 1, I've completed 29 years wow. as a writer. That's awesome. So uh, all the students here weren't born, and, yeah. and many of their parents did indeed come here while I, and I was their dean. So. so 29 years, pretty long time. Long time. Longer than I was born, not to tease you. Thank but. you for reminding me, <laughs> Nick. Thank you uh, but it. I do, so then tell me, that 26 years. 29. 29 years, I should say. I'm 26. Just wanted to reinstall that one. Um, and you, you don't look a day over 25. Right? I know, yeah. I was actually just carded from bringing an R-rated movie at Best Buy for one of the events tonight. I that's said, make you feel good. It does, until, until I just realized that that's part of the process. They have to do that. I got carded <laughs> to see Scream 4 recently, too. That was good. Um, and, but my question is, so 29, 29 years, some great moments. Like what, what sticks out to you as some of the, the real, maybe not moments, but the real defining feelings or mo uh, memories that you have? Um, when we became a university, that was, that, that was know, cool. My, my first thought was, what's the big deal? But it was a big deal. Sure. And it, it sort of gave us a, you know, a pump your chest yeah. moment. That, that, was, that was very nice. Um, you know, I've never had actually anybody talk to me about that. What, was, what happened on campus when that happened? They had a big celebration, um, yeah. much like University Day is okay. now, how we celebrate the anniversary of, of when that day it was. Brand new. Yeah, that's um, pretty cool. Uh, it, it, was, it, was a, it was a great celebration, and, and uh, it, it kind of gave us a different kind of status, sure. a different feel, um, and that was, that was a great day. Um, well, I, I used to be the Associate Dean of the College of Business Administration, sure. and when we first got AACSB accreditation. Okay. It was a great day. Um, there were so many of them. You know, graduation is always bittersweet. I, I know. Kids I know. who um, I didn't think, you know, uh, um, would make it, and we work with them. Sure. Yeah. Um, and and they, not only do they make it, but they make it big, and that, that's always special. Yeah. yeah. Um, kid, you know, parents thinking enough of their time at Ryder to send their kids here. 
I, I, they're, they're always a special moment at sure. Ryder because you sure. get so close to the students that you are um, constantly being, you know, when, when a student comes back with their children. Yeah. Now, I don't mean yeah. to come to Ryder, just say, you know, I'm doing well. I have three children now. I had to bring them to meet you. It just, wow. It, That's it's really nice. cool. That's those, really, those really kind cool. kind of special days. Were you here, I'm, I'm sure you were, when, uh, when our school Ryder, uh, first? No, 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 no. I think he, we know you were here for that. No. Um, when the school changed his colors from purple and gold to cranberry and white? Yes, I, I still have purple and gold shirts. Do you? I don't, I don't wear them anymore, but I still okay. have Now, this was 1988. Mm -hmm. I had been here six years already. When wow. Been. Yeah, I've been, I'm here a long time. Was there a big to-do made about that? No, it, it just they said we're changing our colors, yeah. and that was it. I, I would imagine the bookstore, not the university store at the time, but the bookstore book okay. had a, um, a whole load of inventory that they wanted to get rid of cheaply. Absolutely. That was, uh, yeah, I, I don't remember that being a big deal. Well, the only thing I know about it, and I've come to read this from, that, from Walt Brower's History of Rider book that I've been reading, uh, is the, that they initially they marked that, that moment by, on, during homecoming, which used to take place during October, uh, that time period, um, putting the official new flag up. I think that that was really all of the pomp and circumstance that there pretty, was with it. Pretty much. Um, it was, um, a, a, a not, I don't remember it as being a big event. Not sure. Not like university. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we became a university. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing sticks out other okay. than we changed colors. Yeah. I kind of like the old colors. Do you? Well, I mean, I... You know, well, rumor, rumor has it, this is what, I, what I've come to know, is that um, apart from, you know, embracing a different a different feel and different marketable feel was that the the people that we were working with to develop our athletics uniforms at of the time were having a difficulty making a purple and gold uniform have you heard anything about this uh, no but purple and gold i think are the colors of like the lakers so yeah i don't know i don't know that, that was that was what i heard in the pipeline i don't know if it's true but i do want to go back to the, when when families uh and this this just struck in, struck into me um in my experience when i was a student here um, when they come to you, and I'm more interested in the first generation college student families and your interaction with them, and how is that different than families who have come here where the parents were in college? Um, the parents who come, uh, the families that come when they're first generation, and th that's less and less, by the way. Now. Yeah. It used to uh -huh. be much more prevalent. Um, they really are open books. They're, they're willing to listen to everything. Sure. They don't know because they didn't experience it. Yeah. Um, when the mother and father went to school, there's more of a tendency to, well, here's what I know and here's, here's how my kid's going to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the feel is a little different. They're less willing to accept what you have and more willing to have their student do it the way yeah. they did it, kind of. And they, like they a eventually glory days kind of mentality? Yeah, well, I, I think it, um, if you're talking about rider students, yeah. rider yeah. students uh, that now have students here, they are more willing to accept. They know how Ryder is and, sure. and you know, what, what to look for and what not to look for. They're amazed, by the way, by the transformation. Oh, yeah. Because we were a different school back Absolutely. then. They Absolutely. They usually say when alumni come that I see that they, it doesn't even look the same. Right. Um, but uh, parents give students the benefit of their experience. Sometimes, most of the time it fits. Sometimes it's done a little differently. Sure. And they sure. have to... They have to let go a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, one of my favorite uh, topics with that, that, I, that I overhear and kind of just receive what they're saying is uh, when parents come by who swear their experience in the pub was one thing that you just know from, an, like from managing, managing the space was just so different and, you know, how wild things were. And I, I don't know, quite know how, how wild they um, really were. Well, you have to remember back in the day, and I don't remember exactly when it changed, um, you know, the drinking age used to be 18. That's true. That's true. So a lot more... Um, uh, of the events on campus may have had alcohol. Yeah. Um, you'd see um, when the pub was open every night, you'd see faculty in there yeah. hanging out with students. Um, there's less of that, obviously, um, as, uh, particularly now. But, sure. But, um, some, but not, yeah, some, but not. not but, but back then, it wasn't that unusual a sight to okay. see people okay. hanging out with students in the pub. So we've just welcomed in, in 2011, I guess this is the class of 2015, is that mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Any quick observations on this class as a whole, as a collective? Hard to get a read. It, uh, they seem pretty, pretty normal sure. so far. Um, uh, moving went smoothly. Yeah. They're, they, they are so busy early on. We have a three-day fall opening, chock yeah. full of activities. They're meeting each other. I think now you'll see issues start to arise. You know, yeah. it's great meeting your roommate. Um, but as you live together for a few days, you have to start to sort out issues. Absolutely. 
Um, we are giving you all sorts of fun things to do for three days. Now classes begin. Sure. So you've got to transition from being I'm in college to I'm a college student. Yeah. And that's, yeah. A, that's a challenging it's tough. thing. It people. really is tough. We're, we hopefully, you know, they're in a freshman seminar. Yeah. That will help them. But uh, this class is, um, you know, it's pretty typical of previous classes. I will say this. They're coming classes. Each successive class comes in much more tech savvy. Um, this class in particular, uh, we're, we're paying a little more attention to things like my info at orientation. Yeah. Uh -huh. And we're finding that they're ahead of the curve. They've already, They've gone, already in gone in and in figured there. that out. Yeah. Um, they figured out what their schedule is before they get sure. here. Yeah. Um, those are things that are um, picking up pace as we move along. Well, it's only been nine years since I got here, like I said. And when I came here, I didn't have, I had just got a cell phone. Um, but we still use room phones, which is just, you know, uh, incredible. But the second thing, I didn't come here with a computer. So the computer labs were yep. the, the hop in place. So that is, is drastically different. I have not, for I think it's about two years, I have not reach the student via the room via phone. the room phone not for uh, yeah not I don't know I can't remember doing that cell phones bingo yeah yeah but I remember that that was the thing when you picked up the phone if it had that the, 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 the dialed thing that was just it sounded, uh, sounded I don't wrong. even know that students bring phones anymore I doubt it I doubt um, it they all have cell phones yeah yeah, yeah. So we can get rid of that port and put in something else absolutely there. well I, I have to tell you this and I don't know that you know this I, I don't know that we've ever had this conversation about this but as I was thinking of so the first year for experience for students is I guess next is a month month and a half they, two months when they start registering for classes you know my freshman year you made a decision that changed the course of my life that I don't, that of course you don't know or, or remember, and I'm sure you do it on a daily basis and it's just not even acknowledged, but um, I was a marketing student, okay? And for the, for I guess, it was a reverse alphabet year for when I did, uh, when I went to register for class. So my last, last name is Barbati. I was like the very last person to register. Uh, and I guess, do the students still have to go to the registrar's office for the first time? Uh, not anymore. Not we anymore. changed that last year. Actually. Well, we used to, we had to go. So that was, that was the thing. So everyone camping out like that morning before the morning of the of registration so we were all out there and you were in there to help us with classes when like our, all of our classes got full and like I said I was marketing and I had all my business classes and I had I've only was only registered for, for four classes and you said well how about we do a political science class with Dr. Rebovich yeah. and I I was like well that sounds fun I knew my dad had known uh, Dr. Rebovich from you know just outside of Ryder and I took the class and I enjoyed that so much that I then followed up with a Kornberg class and then, you know, a Rusciano class. And honestly, by that point, I changed my major to political science. Now, I would have never taken a political science class, ever. Um, but I, I, I have to be genuine with you. Is that definitely changed my college career, and it was one of the really defining moments in my college life. I, I'm very grateful for that. Um, well, th thank you. Um, your Reb was, uh, Dr. Rebovich was, was a great man. He was entertaining. Sure. Uh, he was... Um, you know, one of the other things, you know, um, going back to your question about, you know, great moments, there were also some very sad moments. Terrible. Um, losing, losing Dr. Rebovich was one of those. That was a shock, um, tremendous loss to Ryder. Yeah. He was so engaging and so funny and yeah. entertaining that students didn't realize they were learning stuff. Yeah. I mean, you're, you, you can probably speak to that better than I can, but yeah. we, we've had a number of people like that that just, they make learning fun. Some, yeah, some, yeah. some of the greatest teachers, we, you know, we have here are those, those yeah. people that, Students just look forward to going to their class. Yeah, he was he was a tremendous loss, and yeah. um, you know I still miss him. Yeah, I had him I had him many times. Well, I you guys had won uh, the Frank Elliott Award the same year, yeah. correct? Yeah, and right. that's honestly I have only ever known through you know Dave Keenan and Cassie Acavelli saying that that was the most memorable of the uh, I guess the convocations where that was awarded. Yeah, Dave Dave was um, the, when when you win the Elliott Award and I was, I was fortunate enough to win it. Um, they uh, they tell you you have two minutes. And I yeah. think they've changed that a little bit. So I stuck to the script. I, I did two minutes. Yeah. He did about a 20-minute routine. So um, I told him, hey. He, he said, you're just upset because I was funnier than you were. <laughs> I said, your first 30 minutes were funny. I said, the other two hours were really tedious. Really so, but, but, yeah, he was, yeah. He, was a great, he was a great man. We, we've, lost, we've lost some people here. And he, he was like yeah, the more, one of the more um, uh, tragic losses yeah. here at it was mid, That was Midnight Madness 2007, the morning of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'll never forget that. Um, so another thing uh, you are, are known for is working with the orientation staff. Uh, so this year, you had a great bunch, great group, uh, as always. You know, that's one of the most desired positions on campus. I think when all students come in, that's, that's something that they're gunning for or, or thinking, well, I can do that. You know, I can really, really. 
So for anybody, this is probably watched by freshmen in the show from what I assume is, you know, what is some qualities that you look for for that position? Um, well, first of all, you have to have a little bit of a presence. Mm -hmm. um, but even if you're shy, we'll, we'll beat it out of you. Yeah. So um, it's good. <laughs> uh, you have to be willing to work with people. And you have to be able to um, work within a group. Yeah. Um, because orientation staffs, they, they look like a well-oiled machine. But behind the scenes, they don't always love each other. Yeah. Um, there's always, you know, as there is anywhere, there's drama. Um, so you've got to be able to absorb and fit in and work with all sorts yeah. of personalities that you may or may not like. Yeah. Um, you've got to respect each other. Uh, we put you through an arduous process, as sure. you know, because you're, you're generally part of it. Yes. Um, it's, it's, you know, be outgoing, be yourself, um, be willing to work in groups. We'll see how you work in groups yeah. through the process. Um, and, you know, be willing to help. Um, it's... We look for people who are engaging, but you know we've had shy people. Yeah. Um, it's a willingness to, to to fit in and to help and to do all the stuff that needs to be done. Yeah, and it's a lot hard of times, work. Well, a lot of times it is that X factor too of just you know there's a quality about you that we think yep. the freshmen really respond to. I know you're right from sitting around that table. That is something. That yep. is something to definitely look for. So, but the other thing about orientation, there's some older um, uh, students, some like rising seniors, then there's rising sophomores. You know, and then that actually got me thinking is, so you work with a lot of younger professionals, more re like just out of grad school and all that kind of stuff. Is there anyone that, you know, y you see yourself in a lot, a lot of that, that, that's working here or say, oh, that's, that reminds me of me at that time? That's a great question. Um, you know, I started out as an academic dean here. Yeah. Uh, and I did that for the first uh, 15 years I was here. Um, that sounds like a long time I did that. Oh. Um, I, I, see, <laughs> I see a lot of young professionals um, doing things that, yeah. I, I guess, in, in different, different places. Um, so when I see somebody, you know, accompany a student somewhere um, or accompany a trip or willing to do things that, yeah. um, I, I was very fortunate. I, I love my job, and I've loved it from the beginning. I, sure. felt, I felt blessed to be able to do this. So I was willing to, whatever they asked me to do, and I see a lot of people like that. They just are so happy to be here. Yeah. Um, and that, that I, I love that energy. And, sure. Um, one of the things that makes a job like this desirable for anybody, you're working in a university, is the fact that every year you get a whole new group of students. You get re-energized. Yeah. Right. So it, it, there's never a dull moment. The day is never, is never dull. And just when you think you've seen everything. Sure. Um, you haven't seen everything. Well, it's funny because I, I talk. I see your energy, Nick, and I see what you do, and I see yeah. how you reach out and, and, and help students. And that, that's sort of, you know, the kind of thing that I, that I would like to think I did yeah. early on. So it, it really is um, uh, a matter of a willingness to go the extra mile. And I, I think I see that all over campus with a lot of young professionals, right. particularly in student affairs. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. But it's funny just because Jill Shockley, who is the most frequent guest on this show, as, as I'm sure you can imagine, you know. So she's the go-to person. Jill, there's not one here. Can you come on in? But um, we always talk about it like, wow, so I will pr pretty soon. And by pretty soon, you know, 10 years, our, our students going to associate us as being, you know, of, of, that, of that generation. But um, what I asked some of the students from Ron here what a question to ask you was. And their question was something that I, I can't believe I didn't think of was, with all the renovations on campus, your office was invaded by the renovation. Uh, you lost a window. I did. I did. <laughs> so, Bittersweet, I guess, mostly sweet. And, and you know what I did? I'll, I'll let you in a little secret. I, um, they took out the window, uh -huh. and it was like stark. It was cinder block. Yeah. And they kept telling me they were going to put <laughs> sheetrock in. So I said, OK, how can I expedite this process? So I invited people to come up and put graffiti on my cinder block. Yeah. Nothing offensive. Nothing offensive. And people did. They signed their names. Yeah. They my put, name was on there twice. Nick, Nick was on there twice. They, they put. Um, um, I love the Yankees. Yeah. Um, and do you it, love the Yankees? I do love the Yankees. Yes, okay. Um, and uh, it really became pretty ugly. Until yeah. finally I brought somebody back. I said, this is going to keep going. <laughs> so they came in that next day and they sheetrocked it. Yeah. Thank you, Phil Voorhees. Yes. And uh, they painted it. So now I'm going to get shelves there. Well, okay. Uh, but I have no idea what the weather is when I'm in my office. Well, now you know what it feels like. Usually I, I don't have any uh, sense of that either. This is the first time in almost 30 years that I don't have a window at Ryder. Um, I have a dark, stark office, but 
Yeah. But does Dean Campbell still have his window? He has one window. Oh, yes. okay. Oh, he lost yeah. one though. Yeah. Well, his office is about three times the size of mine, and yeah, with rank with rank comes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Maybe well I'm, deserved. I'm sure he's happy to share his yeah. window with us. So, okay, 29 years, great stuff, phenomenal. A dean, awesome accomplishments. What's there left to accomplish? You've won the big awards. <laughs> what do we want to do? I want to go to Disney World. Oh, okay. No, um, I've been there. Um, no, there's still lots. This is what I mean. Every year, a new class. We're, yeah. we're working on some initiatives. Um, we've got a number of things going on that I think um, ultimately will will be um, if, if we're doing stuff that's beneficial to students. There's a new yeah. initiative in, F, in the FYE program, for sure. example. We're working on some things that we think will make it a premier program that we can use in other residence halls. Um, we're working on um, some some things that uh, in the seminars that will make the transition easier. There's always something to work on. It's never ending. It's never ending. And the ball keeps rolling, you know? The ball keeps rolling whether you want to yeah. stop or not. And with so. each new class you see, and this is what I was trying to explain to my parents the other day, with, with you, you see that, well, that one that's a freshman, and you're like, well, why do I like you so much that I want to see you all the way through your four years here, you know? You know, one of the, again, bittersweet, um, you get a kid in or a student yeah. in who is, you get close to. Yeah. And they're here, and then suddenly they're gone. They're gone. Nicole Halpin, I have to tell you this. You know, she was the Roseanne Barr of Rider University, as I called her. O Staffer. O Staffer, tremendous, you know, got an, a job. You know, she's, you know, the embodiment of when people graduate what they should be. But, gosh, it feels like she was literally just getting here. She was just that mouthy freshman that all of a sudden, she, what do you mean? Yeah. What do you mean she's gone? You well, know? Welcome to my world. I get close to kids, my O Staffers, for example. Sure. Um, we really, because you work. 24-7. Yeah. Uh, we work during the summer. We work, you know, 15, 16-hour days. During the fall opening, we just came off of the fall opening. I, I was doing 17, 17-hour yeah, no days. But you get really close. They're, they're like my own children, I have to say. Um, and many of them, you know, you stay close, and then, sure. poof, they graduate. You know, by the way, if, if I don't win one of the um, You've Made a Difference awards this year that you hand out to <laughs> people, I would like and one anyway. The, regardless of whether a student acknowledges me or not, because I worked fall opening, as you know, with a pain in my tooth, which turned out to be a wisdom tooth, breaking the tooth next we, to it, causing a root to be exposed. We, we saw your face was a little swollen. We didn't want to tell you anything. Well, Nick. I just appreciate that nobody called me chubby. You know, that's, that, would, that to me would you, be no, the worst thing. I've seen you work out, Nick, and you sweat the way I do. You'll <laughs> never be chubby. Yes, I think we're the big yeah, we are. We are. So, some rapid fire questions. We always we Go always ahead. close this thing off. Rapid fire is everyone's favorite, um, Go ahead. or what I'm told. What's your favorite writer tradition? Um, my favorite writer tradition, I guess, would have to be um, Cranberry Day. Okay. Uh, your favorite Broadway show? I know you like Broadway. Avenue Q. Oh, yeah. I've asked you that before. Now that I think about it, I've never seen that. It's off Broadway now. It's off. I saw it on Broadway. Yeah. Three yeah. times. Did you see Memphis? I did see Memphis. Did you like it? I liked it. I liked it. I saw yeah. Jersey Boys. I liked it. Same I, thing. You know what? Nobody gets it. Here's what happens. Sometimes people build things up so Too much, much Too that much. you expect the Sound of Music, West Side Story, and it's like, oh, it's a cute little show. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's the, the, the thoughts were with me with Jersey Boys was I saw them perform on Dick Clark's uh, Rockin' New Year's Eve, uh, and it was great. But, you know, if I want to see a Frankie Valley cover band, at least then go. I'll see the full song. You know, you that go. was my, my theory on that. It does have a writer grad uh, appearing in the show. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. The best song of that is My Eyes Adored You. Um, TV show. My favorite TV show. Of all time. Of all time. Wow, Nick. Um, Hill Street Blues. Was that from the 70s? Uh, 80s. Uh, 80s, probably. Yeah. Okay. Favorite restaurant? I like Amici's in Chambersburg. Probably the last Italian restaurant left in Chambersburg. But isn't Di Lorenzo's tomato pie still there? I don't go there. Well, it's good. Good tomato pies. Um, Palermo's in Bordentown. I didn't know that. Yeah, try it. It's right on Route 6. I don't really go to Bordentown. I lived there for a little bit. Yeah. Great, great. Bordentown City is a quaint little city. Yeah, the city's very. I saw, Restaurants once, are I, phenomenal. I, I was in a film once that uh, filmed there. It was a real low point of my life. <laughs> I played a bartender. Not good. Not okay. good. Um, favorite vacation spot? Uh, Punta Cana, Dominican Republic. Okay. A favorite talk show host? Nick Barbati. That's not true. Who is it? Um, I'm the Letterman guy. Really? Yes. Yeah, I can see that. Definitely more Letterman than Leno. I don't like Jay Leno. I don't like him. You know who all. I think the great um, talk show host of all time? Oprah Winfrey. 
I'm not an Oprah guy. I like to think I have a little Oprah in me. Um, Oprah, Oprah did her thing. You, you can't, you can't argue with her success. Okay. Now we do have one thing that's that's maintained in the three years since we've been doing this show. That while the set has changed, my producers and directors have changed. We always ask this question or something along the lines of this question. What is your favorite Madonna memory? Because you know she is the the guiding. Yeah, light. I know. I I know your fascination with Madonna. My favorite She's Madonna memory is. Um, when she dated Alex Rodriguez, because I'm a, I'm a Yankee fan. Yeah, that was good. And you know what I loved about that was when people used to, this is, a, this is a great story about that. When people, first of all, people used to chop off pictures of her head and have it in the crowd to like distract him. I know. But what's so funny, this is a true story. He did an interview with GQ magazine in which they asked him what his favorite Madonna song was. And he said whatever it was. And then called the interviewer back immediately and said, please remove any mention of that, destroy the tapes, anything. Because they were worried they were going to play that song, the opposing teams, over and over and over again when he showed <laughs> up to great. their thing. I thought that was tremendous. Probably only the Red Sox fans would have done that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here. My You've pleasure. survived your first real time. That's great. You know, thank you, great. Nicholas. So thank you so much. And thank you to everybody for joining us here on Rider Real Time. We are starting our fourth, fifth, whatever season we're on right now. And we look forward to having a lot more guests. Um, coming to you live from large events like Midnight Magnus, the concert. We say live. It's not really live. But uh, we look forward to highlighting all these events and the spectacular people here at Ryder who put them on. Thanks so much.